Bruce for Orlando. Nelson in the follow combined a guard. And they've got Vucevic, the sweet shooting seven footer out of USC, in at the center. Then there's Tobias Harris. And it's Davis in at the four spot. And looking at this Clippers team, CP3 at point with Reddick there at the backcourt. And inside at center, a long 6'11, the skyscraping big man out of Texas AM, DeAndre Jordan. Then there's Jared Dudley, and it's Griffin in at the power forward. Being able to get points off your defense is one way to get easy scores in the NBA. Orlando really struggled in that capacity. He just didn't have the speed, quickness, tenacity on the perimeter to force those kinds of turnovers. Harris passes to Nelson. No good from outside. Let's find out what Doris Burke has for us. Hey, Kevin, I caught up with Coach Doc Rivers. He said tonight is all about putting in the extra effort on the defensive end. Coach went on to say, I put up a challenge to each and every one of my players tonight. If every player can keep their opponent from below their normal scoring numbers, they'll get the next practice off. Sounds like good motivation, gentlemen. Okay, thank you, Doris. And the defensive approach, guys, how do you think that'll play out here? I don't know, Kevin. I'm not sure they should be more focused on their opponent than they are on themselves. That is sort of the way it sounds, Steve, but still, I don't think a defense-first mindset is ever a bad thing. Down low, got a piece of it, and stolen by a follow. Throws it down as the official calls the foul. It may be a three-point play. It's going to be on Blake Griffin. Oh, what an amazing throwdown. Fearless to go after a big guy in the paint like that. Orlando shooting their first free throw of the game. Well, this is a club that shot 75% as a team from the free throw line last season. And you look at the Magic's offensive rankings from a season ago, Steve, they could have used all those easy buckets off steals in a big way. Well, they would end up second to last in, in the league in terms of steals per game. You, know, you take into account the fact that, uh, you know, they, they didn't play with much pace and they get easy baskets. It's all tied together. You, know, you want easy buckets, you've got to force turnovers. And Vucevic kicks to Harris. Harris gets the screen from Vucevic. And it's Harris off the drive. Nelson outside. Six on the shot clock. Stolen by Dalton. Now the Clippers moving it up. And he finishes the break with a lay-in. Heads up play on both ends there. Transition basketball. The steal and the quick push. Steve, that's how it should be played. I mean, rapid-fire basketball. Davis with a screen on Paul. Nelson dishes to a follow. Nelson, the pass to a follow. Davis against Griffin. Shot clock at five. Davis kicks to Nelson. Once again off the mark, Orlando. Clippers leading by five. Clark, their offense has been great here. Yeah, I love the way they've looked really strong and together. Yeah, and very aggressive, too. Keeping the defense off balance with their ball movement. I like the way they look. Harris with it. The pass to Nelson. Top of the key. And he buries that one, drilling the rim on the way down. A good first contest so far as we finish the first quarter. Neither team able to build much of a lead up to this point as we start the second quarter. And let's quickly break down the game we've seen from the Clippers, guys. Well, the thing they tried to establish right away was the presence down low. You look at the points in the paint. I think that's been the difference. Yeah, and I like the fact, Steve, that they're not settling for the outside shots. I mean, go in there and get what you want. Keep attacking the rim. The screenplay worked ideally there, and I'm not talking about the screenplay you see in a movie theater. <laughs> Gave him more than enough room to get that shot off. It's Crawford with the drive. The teardrop falls in. You know, last season, guys, the Clippers were fourth in offensive efficiency, and you got to give a lot of credit to their terrific point guard rotation. Chris Paul led all point guards in player efficiency rating, and his backup, Eric Bledsoe, was 15th. That's pretty, that's a heck of a combo. Nelson kicks to Max Hill. Back to Nelson. There's the feed to Oladipo. 
The high post shot. And Orlando again with the bucket. Well, going back to the great point guard play for the Clippers, they were third in the league in assist percentage. And top five in terms of points in the paint, Kevin. So their big guys really fed off the penetration and great passing uh, from Chris Paul in particular. Really left the one run. I like the offensive awareness to exploit that lack of coverage on that play. And now the first timeout called here for the Magic. Magic trail by four. Well, one thing that Byron Mullins added last year was a three-point shot, and he wasn't shy at all about trying it out. I mean, it was still a work in progress, and right now I think it's a part of his game. Lock at six. Hit his foot, and it's being called a kickball. One twenty-two left in the second quarter. Pass to Nelson. Six to shoot. Kicks to Oladipo. Back to Nelson. And it's Orlando with another. And to go back to Mullins, not the best percentage from outside, but he is a spot of big man. Well, if he can get his three-point percentage up a little higher, you know, along with his decent rebounding, I think they found something in terms of a player who can be a consistent threat in that front court. Here's Collison. Passes it to Barnes. This is to Crawford. From past the arc. And another three for the Clippers. There's six points on consecutive three ball. They're finding holes in this defense. It should be easy to collect, though, if you start making the right rotations defensively. Pass to Harkins. Back to Nelson. Now the dish to Oladipo. He feeds it to Nelson. Lets it go with the three. Gets it to go. Nelson's got nine points. He had to wait for a while all the way until now. But he's finally got his first three-pointer of the game. Outside Collison. He kicks to Barnes. He dishes it to Griffin. Using his post moves to get the two points. Griffin's got his second basket. Nice soft touch to drop that one. In. And a tight game here as we end the first half. And now, brought to you by Sprint. And a fun game going on out in Los Angeles. Thanks for joining us. The Clippers looking good at the midway point. Offensively, they're making it look ridiculously easy. Everything's falling. Jamal the Sprint Halftime Report, presented by Sprint. Well, both sides have assessed what they need to do over the break in halftime. We'll see now if one can pull out away here in the third. Some great work by Tamir Nelson. He has nine points, and he's put one three-pointer on the board. Going forward, I think it'd be a good idea to let him spend a little more time behind the arc. He looks like he has a nice touch from out there. Fader on the way. Gets the bucket. Alfalo's got the first basket of the second half. That one for the match. You know, CP3 did a lot of things, guys, to change the culture of the Clippers, but one that maybe gets overlooked is how much he encourages and model talking on defense with this team. If you don't call out a screen or a rotation on his team, he'll call you out about it. Orlando trailing here, and Doris Burke has a report for us from the sideline. Guys, what an amazing transformation for the Clippers since the acquisition of all-star point guard Chris Paul. They're coming off their best regular season in franchise history and now are considered a title contender. But Paul is far from satisfied. He said, I don't really even think about all that. My mind is always on, what can we do to be better? What's next? Who's next? I think when you start feeling good about yourself, you stop thinking about moving forward. Guys, he's always in hot pursuit of that first ring. And credit him for keeping his concentration on his job. Good story, thanks. 
textbook example there of how to use defense to create offense. Yeah, beautiful transition play after the steal all the way to the basket. Wasted no time going from defense to offense. Yeah, it feels like they're starting to pick up the intensity as the game itself starts to get a little more tight and close. Now a timeout called by Orlando. And we've seen the Clippers turn around over the last few years. It doesn't just happen purely with talent, although it helps, certainly. But, Steve, a lot of it has to do with the change in the team's mindset. Yeah, you can load up a team with a bunch of scorers and talented players, but if they aren't playing for each other and motivated to have each other's backs, then it does nothing. Yeah, I think Paul has done wonders for just the chemistry and the mindset of this Clippers team. Here's Davis, and Paul pulls it down. And that's a shot he had to take. For sure, it was a good decision, just poor execution. Orlando grabs the miss. Vucevic has got three rebounds so far in the game. Feeds it to Harris. Good ball movement here by the Magic. Alfalo dishes to Nelson. They double him with Jordan. Nelson kicks to Alfalo. Out of bounds as Orlando keeps possession. Fifty-four seconds left here in the third quarter. Four on the clock. Griffin on the double team. Here's Davis. The basket good off the assist from Nelson. Nelson's got three assists in the game. They can go two for one. Yeah, they need to play it smart. Make sure you get a good shot first, and then maybe a second possession. Paul goes in. Griffin. Now the pass to Dudley. Back to Griffin. And lots of contact there. Missing the shot. He'll shoot two. It's going to be on Glenn Big Baby Davis. The Clippers shooting their first free throws of the game on this trip to the line. That free throw good from Griffin. And good on the second, so he makes them both. A touch over two and a half minutes of basketball played here in the third quarter. Nelson kicks to a Aflalo, and there's the feed to Davis. Back to a Aflalo, down to five on the shot clock. The shot, no good. Here's Reddick. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. The Clippers have been perfect at the line so far, albeit just two for two. Two shots. The free throw drops for Reddit. And the Clippers making a change here. And both free throws good for Reddit. Boy, his free throw shooting just another reason. He's such a good all-around player. And we've reached the end of the third. All right, we welcome you back to what's been a hard-fought battle. Fourth quarter should be good. And a moment here to take a look at the scoring breakdown for the Clippers. Anytime you get as many points in the paint as they have, you know you've got a good thing going and you just want to keep it going. And they've been knocking down the mid-range jumper as well. Well, with that much space off the pick, you've got to drop that in. Yeah, you got to make that one. I mean, that's a high-quality shot you should make nine out of ten times. You know, tired legs can affect you at the defensive end, and I think that's what's happening right here. I agree, because as much offense as we saw early, we're seeing even more of it here late. Here's Paul. Up top, Dudley. Good, and Paul gets the assist. And the Clippers lead by four. Yeah, and there's been zero effort defensively by both these clubs tonight. And don't let that high score fool you. I mean, it's a product of poor defense more than great offense. And foul called as he misses. He'll go to the line and shoot two. Pretty bad defense letting the offense get right to the rim, but smart play and foul once he was there. But you know what's going to happen, and they sent a message right there. Nothing easy inside. Orlando making some changes. Vucevic checked in for Maxia. And Glenn Davis subbed in for Maurice Harkins. He hits one, then misses the second attempt from the free throw. Line. Crawford passes to Paul. 
Pass to Dudley. This one for three. That is good. The defenders need to talk to each other. The communication lacking there on that three-pointer. Ball against Nelson. Doubled by Dudley. Oladipo dishes to Davis. Nelson outside. He passes to Oladipo. And they come right back with their own three-pointer. How about the response? Retaliation. Impressive, huh, guys? I'll say exactly that as well. Nice job to recover those three points right away. Now Griffin inside. Stolen away. Nice job to interrupt the alley-oop attempt there. Nelson with it. Chris Paul covering. And Paul over to help. And Vucevic kicks to Oladipo. Can't tie it up because that one's no good. And nine times out of ten, he's going to knock that one down. We'll spray that one on you. One ten left in the fourth quarter. Ball outside. The ten foot. Here's Griffin. It's good, and he drew contact on the shot, so he will go to the line. Three-point play chance here. And the Magic making a change here. Aflalo's checked in. Well, everybody knows around the league that if you get in Blake Griffin's way when he has a head of steam going, you're going to end up on his poster at some point. So, since coming into the league, I think he's, as, he's become as intimidating a player as we've seen. I agree. It's just not posterizing people either, Steve, although he does a bunch of that. When he gets a steal and has a free lane to the basket on a breakaway, there's a good chance the crowd's going to see a mini dunk contest from Blake. That's not as easy as it made it look, guys. You've got to have some skills to pull that baby off. Well, he's got plenty of those skills <laughs> necessary for him. Oh, you know it. The guy can climb the ladder, can't he? The three from a follow. It's in! And he has brought them to within two points. A crucial basket. They needed it, and he gave it to them. Steve, what a big possession right here. No doubt, guys. You can feel the tension in this building. Just one second between the shot clock and game clock. Well, that just adds to what's probably an already insurmountable lead. I think they'll be walking out of here with a pretty easy victory. Steve, I think that's a given. Now a timeout called by Orlando. They're losing by four. 19 seconds left in the game. Guys, what's your take? And obviously time is the big factor here because they need to get points fast and then go for the steal, and if not, a quick foul. Hard as it is, you just have to hope the guy you send to the line doesn't convert. Davis, the pass to a flyer. Kicks it to Harris. The three. The Clippers grab the miss. They're going to prolong the game here with an intentional foul. Smart foul there. You've got to try to extend the game. Yeah, it's still close, but they're fighting that clock as much as the score right now. Good on the first, and that puts them up by far. And so he drops them both. It's a six-point ball game. And that ought to do it. I think any chance for a miracle comeback just went out the window with those free throws. Time call here. The Magic decide to talk it over. They're trailing by six. Just four seconds left in the fourth. Guys, what do you think? They need a miracle right now. They have to make the three, then foul, then hope the shooter misses the foul shots, both of them, and then make another three. That is not easy. So the Clippers with the win. They pulled off this win 